Question for you guys, what is black, white, and red all over? The answer is a sunburnt penguin, but also these. I'd like to take a moment to apologize for that terrible What's going on guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the brand new Made in Japan Mizuno Rebula 2 V1 in the 2018 World Cup Passion Red colorway. This is a brand new boot that quite simply most people do not even know exists. It's expensive with a $300 retail price, which doesn't necessarily help its case, but I can honestly say that this is one of the best quality boots to come out in 2018 without question. Mizuno is extremely underrated and this is their second generation of the already impressive Rebula V1, which by the way, the V1 expresses that it's a top end model, not version one, because this is the Rebula 2 V1. I realize that's a little bit confusing, but that's how they decided to do it. We're gonna go over all the details of what these things are all about, including how they fit and feel on feet in today's video. So if you wanna learn more, please stick around. And if you are interested in a pair of these for yourself, they are available now. You can click the little pop-up in the corner of the screen or the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. you will be able to pick these up below their normal $300 retail price. If you guys do end up enjoying the video, don't forget to support it with a like. And if you're new here watching for the first time, don't forget to hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear and sunburnt penguin jokes. Included with the boots is this matte black box with gold made in Japan branding. You also get this string bag that is black in color with the made in Japan branding on the front. Can't wear it as a backpack though, but it does have strings at the top to secure the bag. Overall string bag score, honestly, it's not good. 3.95 out of 11. You also get this little bag inside the box that contains a leather care kit. So you get this little applicator cloth, which I'm not even sure what this is made out of, but you get it. And they also include some leather cream in a small little tube that is also made in Japan. You also get this little piece of paper with some care instructions that normally I wouldn't read, but I happened to glance at it this time around. And the very first point is something that I get asked about on a very regular basis. So I figured I would read it to you guys because I think this applies not just to Mizuno, but every brand in general, at least when you're talking about football boots, it says none of the Mizuno range of shoes are suitable for machine washing. This may destroy or damage the technical fibers used on the shoes. So for those that always send me messages asking if it's a good idea to throw their boots in the washing machine the simple answer to that question as i've said from the beginning is no just because you can do it does not mean that you should if you're going to clean your boots wash them by hand moving on to the boots themselves what is kind of a controversial topic when it comes to modern day football boots is that the quality is on the decline they're getting worse and worse which i don't 100 percent agree with but i do see where a lot of people are coming from especially with certain products but that cannot be said about the brand mizuno especially their made in japan products which this is for those that aren't super familiar made in japan Mizuno products are the best of the best. I would go as far as to say that this is the industry standard as far as how good a mass produced shoe can be. And the made in Japan ones are not quite as mass produced as other boots out there. There's more of a handmade element to them. The construction process is a lot slower. They stay on a last, which is basically the shaping of the shoe for significantly longer than the average mass produced shoe would. Basically 24 hours versus one hour, which makes for a more significant difference than you might expect. They also use ultra premium materials, truly the best of the best. And the way these things are put together is really unparalleled by any other brand out there so if you're looking for not only the best quality as far as construction is concerned but also the best durability of any brand out there not just these but any made in japan mizuno product is definitely what you should consider if that's important to you yes these made in japan boots from mizuno are expensive but i definitely think that the price is justified given the quality that you actually get so we know the quality is great but how are the boots themselves well they've basically taken the design of the original Rebula where they introduce the kangaroo leather with the memory foam control frame. Obviously it maintains the same sole plate and stud pattern, but they've taken all the elements and they've tweaked them just slightly to make for a more significant difference than you might expect because this does look quite similar. If you didn't know any better, you'd probably just assume that this was a new colorway of the original Rebula, but that is not exactly the case. What you're gonna find here is a full kangaroo leather upper. The only parts that aren't kangaroo leather is the tongue area, which is completely 
redesigned. I really like what they've done here. And then this kind of mesh base synthetic you're gonna find at the rear, which honestly is not a big deal at all. The majority of the upper, at least the parts that should be in my opinion, are really good quality kangaroo leather, super soft. I think you guys can see the quality in this video. Arguably the best of the best in regards to anything that's out there right now as far as overall leather quality goes. Again, made in Japan Mizuno products, they truly are unparalleled, but the leather itself is actually quite thin. So if you're looking for a super padded feel from the leather, that's not necessarily what these are gonna provide. What you're getting from the leather base here is more so just really good softness and very good flexibility. They feel extremely natural on your feet. What's interesting about this upper though is the control frame on the inside where you can see all of this debossed texturing. The upper does not have any stitching despite being kangaroo leather, which is a carryover element from the original Rebula, but they've basically changed up the control frame on the underside. It's a completely different pattern and it's actually thicker memory foam. So you can see you have the these two really solid strips of memory foam running through the midfoot area. And then it kind of wraps around the forefoot and toe box area, even kind of moving into the lateral side of the shoe almost as a support cage. And that's essentially what it's doing. It's not only reinforcing the leather upper, it's also giving you this dampened padded sensation when making contact with the ball. So you're getting the softness of the kangaroo leather, but it's thinner, so the shoe's not overly bulky, but they added the memory foam to give you that dampened sensation. The lacing system remains pretty much the same. It's off-centered, pushed slightly to the lateral side of the shoe, which is something that we don't see as much of anymore these days, but I really like how this is set up. It also has a nice deep lacing system, which is a very common characteristic that you'll find across all the different silos within the Mizuno brand, allowing for really good lockdown and really good adjustability once the shoes are on your feet. Now the tongue, this is a pretty significant design change in that it's not a regular free floating tongue like we had on the original Rebula V1. Instead, it's an elasticated mesh material. It almost feels like neoprene, but it's not quite that. And it's basically an internal sock. Not a knitted material, not really a sock-like feel, but basically you have a band, I would say about this wide right here, and then this wide right here, that does wrap along the inside of the upper, kind of hugging your foot and not allowing the tongue to move around at all. Again, one of the issues when you have a free-floating tongue, especially with an off-centered lacing system, is it tends to kind of drop and slide over to the side as you start running around. That is not an issue with these whatsoever. It feels really nice on your feet, and the tongue stays 100% in place. Also, it does have a slightly padded feel to it. So for the most part, it does match the thickness of the rest of the upper and works well with all the different materials that are present here. Moving on to the rear of the shoe, you can see that they replace what was otherwise kind of a synthetic material with this mesh base material, which honestly, I don't care for the look of, but I can understand why they did it, especially for the sake of shaving as much weight as possible. It does have an internal plastic heel counter, nice and solid. That's the same as the previous generation. And it's still, a low cut boot, but they have actually changed the cut around the heel area. It's now slightly more rounded across the back as opposed to having kind of two more pointed edges, which honestly I think this feels a lot more comfortable. And then you're also going to notice that the heel liner is completely changed. It's this super, super nice synthetic suede. I know I always comment on this when it comes to like the Nike Tiempo Legend 7 Elite and other shoes that have a suede liner, but nobody does suede quite like Made in Japan Mizuno products. This suede is super soft super comfortable and it grips your heel really nicely as well. One of the best heel liners on the market right now. The insole is also fully removable and kind of the standard made in Japan insole you'll find from any of the Mizuno products. Same as what we got on the original Rebula as well. You can see it has the made in Japan branding but the special part is the liner which is basically this kind of sandpaper like texturing. It's not rough enough to the point where it's actually going to cause discomfort but it's just rough enough to grip your socks really really nicely. It's almost like wearing grip socks built into the insole. It works extremely well and really this is the only brand out there that is putting these in their boots from the get-go that actually make a difference as far as gripping the bottom of your foot. I know Nike has their Nike Grip technology. That has absolutely nothing on this. This is 1000% more effective and the rest of the insole honestly is pretty straightforward. It's a regular layer of this relatively thin white foam. Honestly, nothing special, but the liner here is definitely the highlight of any of the made in Japan Mizuno boots. Which brings us to the sole plate and stud pattern, which is pretty much unchanged in comparison to the previous generation Rebula. And if I'm being honest, while I've been overwhelmingly positive about all the changes they've made to the upper, this is the one element of the Rebula that I am personally not that crazy about. The sole plate feels fine. It has good flexibility to it through the forefoot, and 
seven, good rigidity through the midfoot and heel. That's not the problem. It's just this stud pattern that honestly I don't care for, for whatever reason, because honestly it's not that crazy of a layout. You have the four kind of oval shaped studs on the lateral side, three on the medial side, some blades running through the middle, and then four more oval shaped studs in the heel area. Now there is some technology behind these studs that have the little kind of piece that pokes through the middle. There's some deflection technology where it's supposed to allow for better stability and weight transfer when planting for a strike because of what they've done here. There is a physical difference in the materials of these studs versus these studs. But if I'm being 100% honest, there's really nothing that you can feel that's noticeably different in comparison to other stud patterns in that regard. And really the stud pattern is not overly aggressive. It feels a lot more traditional than it looks. So if you've ever worn the Morelia series from Mizuno, this is more aggressive than that for sure, but definitely not too far off at the same time. What I also like that they do is they include the little rivet at the toe that does attach the sole plate to the upper itself, basically in what is the main area where most people will see sole separation. This just makes that bond that much stronger along with all the glues that they use. And again, build quality for the Made in Japan products is top notch. If you're looking for the most durable product, you're definitely gonna get it from the Made in Japan Mizunos. But as far as the overall performance and feel of the sole plate and stud pattern is concerned, it's nothing spectacular, but it does get the job done. And then there's the weight, which honestly hasn't really changed all that much in comparison to the previous generation. The Made in Japan Mizuno Rebula 2 V1 in a size 9.5 US weighs in at 7.98 ounces, which is about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 ounces less than the previous generation. So technically it has seen some kind of a weight decrease while still maintaining excellent quality. I would even go as far as to say that this feels more premium than the original, which is hard to believe because the original really felt extremely premium and they are a touch lighter. Is that weight difference honestly something that you can feel either in hand or on feet? The simple answer to that question is no. And as a whole, right at the eight ounce mark, it's not a spectacularly lightweight shoe, but they're certainly not gonna feel heavy on your feet either. So as you can see, I swapped out the stock red laces for some black reflective SR4U replacement laces, which I think look really, really good. It makes for a cleaner look being that the tongue is also black in color and the boots are kind of bright pearly red as it is. So you don't necessarily need more accent in my opinion at least plus it's got the reflective bits which always look really cool if you guys are interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com there'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description so if you're interested in a pair be sure to go ahead and check that out on feet the rebula 2 v1 feels really really good not too far off the original rebula if i'm being completely honest the overall shape i would say is pretty well the same. And because it is a kangaroo leather shoe, the predetermined shape doesn't matter too much. It's got a tighter fit out of the box, but because they are leather, they are still going to stretch over time as you wear them in. The control frame, which is there to reinforce the leather, won't necessarily prevent it from stretching in the break-in process. So just keep that in mind. It's gonna require a little bit of wear time until they feel just right, but I definitely wouldn't say that they're uncomfortable out of the box in any way at all. They're just gonna get progressively more comfortable as you wear them in. I love the way they did the tongue, and again, the new heel liner and cut at the heel, I think is a huge improvement as well. So as far as comfort is concerned, you're gonna be hard pressed to find something more comfortable than these, at least in my opinion. As far as width is concerned, it's got a snug fit, but again, they're leather, they will stretch. It's not an overly wide shoe, so I would say if you have really wide feet, maybe not the best option, but I definitely think that these will fit most people after some break-in time. And as far as sizing is concerned, my feet are about a nine and a quarter. I'm wearing these in a size 9.5 US, and the fit and length is pretty much perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. So in conclusion, I'm a really big fan of the Made in Japan Rebula 2 V1. It's a definite improvement over the original. It maintains the same super high quality standards. The leather still feels great. I like the changes they've made to the memory foam control frame. I love the way they did the tongue this time around and the improvements to the heel, I think just make these that much more comfortable. I'm still not crazy about the stud pattern, but as an overall package, especially considering that this is extremely unique in regards to how it feels and you definitely know that they are built to last. This is one of those shoes that I can very, very strongly recommend. I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking, Josh, is this your new personal favorite? And I can tell you that it's definitely up there. I'm always skeptical to say that a shoe is my personal favorite so early on after wearing them, but 
This would definitely be in my top five to top three considerations for personal favorite right now. I'm perfectly happy to wear any of those five at the moment, but to say that these are my absolute personal favorite, I can't just say that yet, but I will update you on that if that changes probably within the next couple of weeks. Either way, if you were thinking about trying out something from Mizuno, specifically a Made in Japan product, and you're a fan of leather boots, this is definitely a boot that I would strongly recommend checking out. Anyways, guys, that is it for my review. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, you can click the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal normal $300 retail price. If you have any questions, as always, leave them down below in the comments, and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching.